Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Aloha, Brian, Corey, Francis, Jim, and Lee. Uh, we'll wait a, a little bit longer, but, but we'll get started not, not, not too soon after. Hope you all are well. Um, heading to the middle of May and, and summertime. Um, so we'll talk about what CDC, the, the big news that CDC uh, dropped today. Um, I, it didn't make its way into the slides, but we'll definitely um, be sure to, to bring that up. Aloha, Janet. Welcome. I know you've had a, a busy uh, couple weeks, so, so thanks for taking the time out to uh, join us this afternoon. Um, today shouldn't take too long. There's no deep dive today, but, but lots of uh, updates in terms of overall COVID and COVID vaccination. Uh, news. Okay, so uh, we'll get going. So Japan, uh, unfortunately, continues to trend upwards. And, you know, even though we have our safe travels with them, you know, it, it's still a concern. And, you know, especially with the Olympics uh, about to go off, it'll be interesting to see uh, what Japan uh, does with regards to the Olympics um, and whether or not they hold it and then if they're going to allow people inside which is going to impact travel uh, through through Hawaii so continue to watch closely Korea um, trending downwards which is great at one point they were trending up um, and once again one of our safe travel partners as well India I think uh, you know looks to be trending down um, however you know, we know this is the, the cases and fatalities are going to just continue to mount um, because they do lag and, uh, you know, some of their uh, national modeling and predictions, um, unfortunately, they're, they're predicting a third surge. So, you know, hopefully it's uh, not to the level that they just experienced and, 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 uh, and we'll keep an eye out. You know, a lot of countries, including the U.S., have restricted travel. Um, but they do have a couple uh, variants that have been identified there. And, um, you know, knowing how variants travel, it's only a matter of time before it makes its way stateside um, once travel is lifted. So continue to keep our eyes on, on that. Uh, uh, on, the on the home front, the national level, some real positive news. Uh, it's a clear trend downwards. And this is the point where, you know, it's, this is exciting where we're, slowly reaching levels that we haven't been at since, you know, September of last year, uh, which is great. You know, we always look at trending up or down, but, you know, I think we're at a point where we can start to make some comparisons with regards to historical levels of uh, disease uh, prevalence. Um, and hopefully we'll continue to keep this uh, moving downwards, especially as more and more of the population continues to get vaccinated. Um, Arizona and California continue to hold flat, and uh, which is great news. Um, Nevada and Texas as well. Nevada 
Um, I, I saw on CNN today that the governor just uh, amended their uh, mask wearing so that it is no longer required um, inside the casinos um, indoors if you are fully vaccinated. And we all know, you know, it's going to be almost impossible to regulate that and it's an honor system. So we'll have to wait and see how that plays out, especially in an indoor setting. Um, Hawaii specific uh, information and, and data, you know, uh, no major concerns right now. I know Maui and Kauai were going through uh, some turbulent times. And Janet, um, I apologize. I haven't had a chance to really keep up with locally, but hopefully Kauai is um, on the right track now with, with the hard work of you and your team. In terms of vaccination administered in Hawaii, uh, continue to do uh, very well. I believe next starting next week, they'll be offering it to uh, the 12 to 15 year demographic, at least with the Pfizer vaccines now that uh, ACIP and FDA have uh, approved UA use um, for Pfizer. And I believe Moderna should be following shortly with that. So once again, increasing, uh, opening up our eligible population and, and increasing the, the, the probability or, or the, 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 the pool of which uh, our Hawaii residents can get vaccinated and really drive up that protection status for, uh, for everybody in the state. Um, no, no major issues with testing turnaround time. And then uh, very, very, uh, if you look at what we were projecting last week uh, compared to this week, uh, very, um, nothing major in, in cases and then subsequently in hospitalizations and ICUs. And Jim, I remember you, uh, um, you, you had the question last week, you know, why we were still showing a pretty steep increase. Um, and I mentioned there was a lag, you know, now we've, been, we've kind of adjusted based on more, you know, with a week's worth of data um, and, and the, the trend is definitely much more mild. Um, awesome, Thank, thanks, Janet. I, I, I keep on getting uh, the state and the, uh, and the military mixed up. So, so glad that the state is already um, for leaning posture. And also thanks for uh, the, so uh, what uh, Janet is, is saying in the chat uh, that I wanna share with everybody. So uh, 12 to 15 year old vaccinations have started statewide and, and good news that Kauai is doing, doing better than, than the past couple weeks. And then there are some data issues with VAMS um, with some of the, the vaccine data not being fully updated since one May. So this is about a couple weeks. So hopefully we'll get that uh, resolved on the, the data informatics size shortly to, to better accurately uh, show what's been what's going on in the state in terms of vaccine administration. Um, quite quite a bunch of science highlights. Uh, obviously the big one today didn't make it here, but we'll discuss it. Um, but you know a lot has to do with uh, vaccine submission for full approval to FDA and then wanted to focus a little more locally um, uh, in terms of you know vaccines and, and uh, what's what's coming down the pipeline locally, so um, both Pfizer and Moderna did submit uh, uh, their you know full they started the paperwork for full authorizations for both of their respective COVID vaccines, um, and so uh, which is which is great news you know basically the biggest reason personally speaking is you know uh, this EUA. Um, has been misinterpreted and been utilized uh, by uh, various, you know, vaccine hesitant groups or just straight anti-vaccine groups by, by saying, you know, it's not trustworthy because it's an emergency use and, you know, spinning this all with, with negative connotations. But, but really, we know that it's because they just needed uh, enough time to pass to collect real world data. And now that both Pfizer and Moderna have six months worth of data, they have submitted it to FDA for full approval. Um, and hopefully that should help combat some of the, uh, the misinformation. And then, you know, now, now that it's, you know, when it does be fully approved, you know, it's gonna, you're starting to see questions in, in national and local media, you know, can that, can a private employer uh, require an employee to be vaccinated and then also school? So uh, Star Advertiser had uh, a good Q&A uh, yesterday. I highly recommend reading it. Um, I'm definitely not, a lawyer and I defer all things legal to, to our uh, resident uh, legal expert, uh, Jim. But to my understanding, um, if you know, private employers can um, require it so long as, you know, based on what it's saying, there, there are reasonable accommodations uh, for those who cannot be vaccinated due to a disability or a sincerely have religious belief. So 
um, more more to follow in this and 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 what's gonna what's gonna happen um, once uh, there's full approval for Pfizer, Moderna, eventually Johnson and Johnson, and then um, you know uh, UH, you know Manoa and the rest of the UH system. I know we have a lot of connections there with all of our high members. Uh, the, the President Lazar is considering um, a, a vaccine mandate. Once again, I, I can't speak to the legal ramifications, whether or not this is legal or not. Um, but, you know, uh, the UC systems and Cal State systems have already announced that uh, once, once again, this is all pending a full approval by the FDA, they're going to make uh, the vaccine mandatory for, for their students. So once again, uh, there's some things to uh, to keep an eye out and and I'm assuming that whatever goes for a private you know private uh, academic institutions for higher learning will probably apply to uh, you know the, the elementary and high school levels at least private as well I'm not too sure about the the state and because the, you know they're not private so um, we'll we'll defer to, to Jim and maybe Jim you know once this happens we can ask you to do a deep dive on the legal Legal side of the legal side of the impact for, for this, because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions coming down the pipeline. Um, and then speaking of our youth, you know, uh, FDA approved or the ACIP recommended to the FDA to approve the Pfizer vaccine for 12 to 15 year olds and Moderna's soon to follow, uh, which is great news for for multiple reasons. You know, it increases our eligible population, um, and, and we're seeing in a lot of populations that now the the cases are attributed to the younger population because it makes sense. They're not vaccinated. So we want to make sure all of our population is vaccinated. And you know, this is another big step to, to getting there. Um, some questions that were feuded is what about you know our elementary younger, younger Keiki? Um, and, and as discussed previously in, in other high PAM meetings, uh, this will take a little longer as um, you know, more time is required to study dosing and and, and dosing schedules um, because our Keiki are 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 prone to uh, are they, they're not uh, the sim they're not the same physiologically and biologically as as adults. So they want to make sure they get the dosing and the schedule right. But they are aiming for uh, fall to late this this year or early next year for uh, at least EUA approval uh, for uh, our Keiki. And then uh, one major thing is that the CDC um, updated their mask wearing guidance today. Uh, for fully vaccinated individuals to reflect if you are fully vaccinated, the CDC recommends that they do, uh, fully vaccinated individuals do not have to wear a mask indoors or outdoors regardless of uh, the situation. So that's good news and the science does support that. However, from a realistic front that that is going to open up a lot of uh, headaches I can, that, that I can already foresee. Um, I, I heard anecdotally um, at Straub uh, today that uh, there was someone that walked in without a mask and, and there was, uh, he was told to put on a mask and he said the CDC said there, there isn't, uh, they recommend they don't need to. However, you know, Straub's, you know, the private entities have yet to update their policy. So we're gonna see more and more of this. Um, and, and, you know, I'm glad the CDC is adopting more common sense um, guidance, but you know the implementation always is going to be a little uh, rough around the edges. Um, and on a local front, uh, the governor just came out this afternoon saying Hawaii will still uh, follow the current mask wearing mandate. So even though the CDC recommended it, it it's important to know that it's still a recommendation, um, and we still have to follow you know federal, state, territorial, um, tribal uh, guidance. And Hawaii's guidance is still to wear masks um, based on what the governor. Um, ha has said so, uh, but it's a good sign, and I believe it's meant to incentivize people to get vaccinated. Um, and I know the the Federal Transit Authority is still keeping that mask mandate in effect at least into September. So, you know, it's going to be uh, inconsistent here and there. Um, I know the White House uh, allow uh, change their policy today to reflect CDC, so that if you're fully vaccinated and you work in the White House. You do not have to uh, wear a mask, but I believe that runs counter to uh, the federal mask wearing mandate. So I'll wait to see if the federal government changes that um, and then see what happens with the rest of the states. Um, so thanks, Jim, for, for uh, kind of putting your, your expertise out there. 
uh, gray, gray areas always will exist for sure. Um, that's why we need lawyers, um, uh, the legal experts. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. But, but that's it for, for our updates. Um, you know, I, I think we're, we're, we're trying to kind of find a balance between the, the science and the epi studies and also what's happening in, the, in real time in the real world and, and, and real world impacts and implications. So hopefully uh, this was a, a very useful um, science highlight and, and uh, I'm, I'm here for, for any questions from, from the group before we uh, get ready for, for, for a nice weekend, hopefully. Oh, and, and one other thing, uh, I'm sure if you're, you're paying attention, the state of Hawaii uh, started their uh, pilot program for uh, inter island uh, vaccine passports. So if you're fully vaccinated with a vaccine um, given at the state and, you, you know, and you're a state resident, um, then you're allowed to, you qualify for that program. So we'll see what happens. I think it, it started a few days ago, a couple of days ago. Okay, I am not seeing any questions um, from the group. Um, so hopefully that means that uh, we're, everybody's on the same page with the policies. And once again, I know there's a lot going on. I have a hard time keeping up myself, but um, that's why we're part of HIPAM and we keep each other accountable and we, we can look at all the spaces that we're experts in and share with everybody. Um, so with that, I'm going to uh, close up for today unless there's any last minute questions or comments and, and we'll see everybody uh, next week, Thursday, and hopefully we'll have, continue to have good news on the vaccine, uh, vaccine front. With that, have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you and take care.